All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Redemption of Light by Kathleen O'Neill Gear. Um, this is book three in her Light Trilogy. I don't know exactly what the name of the trilogy is. I just call it the Light Trilogy. Let's see, it's the uh, Powers of Light Trilogy. I was close. I figured it might be the Light Trilogy because every book in the series has the word light in it. Book number two, Treasure of Light. Book number one, Abyss of Light. And book number three, Redemption of Light. I just call it her Light Trilogy. I guess it's the Power of Light Trilogy. Um, I already forgot. Was it the Power of Light? What was it? Yeah, Powers of Light Trilogy. God, I'm going to have to edit a lot of stuff out of this. Okay, so I've reviewed, I've read and reviewed book number one on my channel. If you want to watch the review of this, just type in the title and um, into your YouTube search bar and then type in my last name. Same with book number two, uh, Treasure of Light. I've re read and reviewed this one. And then now we're to the final book in the trilogy. It's one of my favorite science fiction trilogies of all time. Uh, I do have this trilogy signed by the author. I have met Kathleen O'Neill Gear and her husband, uh, Michael Gear a couple times. Had them sign my books. Um, in fact, I've got every single book they've ever written. They're down there on my shelf. I won't show them to you. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to do my W. Michael Gear and Kathleen O'Neill Gear book collection video, where I'm just going to show you all 70-some-odd books that I have of theirs. Um, but they write a lot of science fiction. They write a lot of historical novels about the uh, Native Americans and a lot of Western novels. They're just very, very prolific writers. And um, let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. All three books in the trilogy have covers done by uh, San Julian, one of my favorite artists from the 80s. In fact, this book was published in 91. I think this book was published in 90 and maybe 89. I don't know. They're all published somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s. But this has got a great cover by San Julian, and it matches the other color covers, as you saw. It's just got a great, shiny look to it. The crystal ball and the lady, and then it wraps around and got some spaceships and stuff on the back. Just dynamite. Okay, let's talk about the book. You know, when we're reviewing the third book in the trilogies, there's not a lot I can say without spoiling the, spoiling the first two books. So I'll just give kind of a brief description of what's happening without getting into uh, spoilers for these two books or for this book. Um, so um, a dozen years have passed since the start of book one. So this is an epic saga that takes place in outer space, space opera. Very grim space opera, opera very dark, very rated R. This is right up my alley. If you like dune if you like the new books by christopher rocchio if you like any dark science fiction you're gonna love these books anyway a dozen years have passed since the start of book one over here and um the alien magistrates who were the bad guys in the book are determined to destroy all that remains of the human slash gamut civilization that's what they call themselves out in this universe far far away there's a, a, a gentleman, Jeremiel Baruch, Jeremiel Baruch. Jeremiel, by the way, Jeremiel uh, shows up in one of W. Michael Gere's Western novels, strangely enough. I don't think it's the same character, it's just the same character name. I just thought that was because I was just reading one of his Westerns about six months ago, and I'm like, oh, there's a Jeremiel in W. Michael Gere's Western and uh, Jeremiel in uh, the science fiction by his wife. What a coinky dink. Anyway, Jeremiel Baruch is the captain of the underground fleet that um, is resisting the underground resistance to the, I mean, they're fighting the magistrates. They don't want the alien magistrates to take over and destroy humanity. So he's the captain of this fleet and they launch a last desperate attack against the enemy um but before they do that his first goal is to really um 
rescue a character named Mikael, M-I-K-A-E-L. I said Mikael. I don't know if it's Michael. I don't know what it is. Um, the leader, he is, now this guy is the leader of uh, the Gamut people, a leader of humanity. Um, and uh, in this rescue attempt, they're just trying to get this, uh, Mikhail is sort of like a prophesied savior of things. And um, Jeremy Baruch tries to, you know, re do this rescue attempt. He launches an attack on a place called Pale Palea Station with his elite team of fighters to rescue as many people off of the planet um, Horab. Um, we've got the space stations, we've got starships, we've got the planet Horab. A lot of this stuff ties together into this rescue attempt to get this uh, um, these people off this planet before the magistrates, the certain annihilation of these people. Um, now, um, the magistrates themselves, they're also in a race to capture Mikhail, this prophesied savior, and destroy him because he is the long-awaited prophesied savior. Um, he was born to be a hero. He's just, he shouldn't be around. You know how it is when the prophesied savior is allowed to live. He saves things. Um, but they don't want that to happen. And um, the crux of the story is, I mean, the th main themes of this story, and that's about all the plot I can really get into. And I really kind of butchered that. Um, but, uh, the main themes of the story are saviors, prophecy. Will God himself intervene in this war? Does God himself make an appearance in this space opera war? Um, huge cast of characters, all of them interesting, all of them with cool names. I really like the way that um, Kathleen O'Neill Gear has named her characters. Um, what is the morality of God? If there is a God, what is his morality? What is he bound to do morally? Um, there's a lot of discussions about this kind of theme because we're talking about gods, humans, prophecies, ancient scripture, all of this stuff playing in. It's one of the, I'll be honest with you, one of the uh, uh, inspirations I had for my own trilogy, and a lot of my fantasy trilogy is based upon these same principles of God, belief, faith in God, prophesied saviors, prophesied second comings of, you know, saviors, all this stuff. I know that in this series specifically, along with a couple of W. Michael Gere's science fiction trilogies, his um, Requiem for a Conqueror and then the uh, Spider trilogy, they all dealt with these themes. And they and they, they were really along with a couple of other fantasy series like say for instance by Kate Elliott. There was a few of these fantasy series that when I was building my own, sort of doing my own world building for my own big fantasy books, I was kind of remembering and recalling what these guys had done with their space operas, with the same sort of religious structure and religious belief and religious dogmatism and and sort of cult-like belief in things. And just if God was even playing a part in any of it, if it was all bullshit, that's really, I mean, I owe W. Michael Gere and Kathleen O'Neill Gere a lot just because when I was reading as a youngster, a lot of my ideas were formulated having sort of read their books in this trilogy specifically. That's kind of what it's about. The trilogy is a 10 out of 10. Uh, I love all three books. I would rate them all highly, and I think I have. This final book is a smash-bang, action-packed space opera adventure with a lot of stuff going on to it and a lot of ideas being thrown out at you. It's just absolutely cool. I can't recommend it enough. And the thing that's cool is W. Michael Gere and Kathleen O'Neill Gere are still writing to this day. I mean, they're producing tons and tons of books even to this day. And what's cool is, don't you love the yellow? The old-time yellow paperbacks. You know, I'll, I'll pull up this C.J. Box book that I just read, which is, the C.J. Box is good, but look at the white paper compared. I love the old-time yellow. Anyway, that's my review of um, Redemption of Light, the last book in the trilogy. I think if you love science fiction and the science fiction that I've compared these to, you're going to love this. God, if you even love my books, you're going to dig these. 
All right, everybody, there you go.